Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first edition of Couch Coding Migrations. Your experts for today are Pantheon co-founders Matt Cheney and David Strauss. Just a few housekeeping items to go over before we start. Please make sure you submit any questions you have in the question window. The session is driven completely by your questions, so the more you send, the better. Also, this webinar will be recorded, and the recording will be made available to everyone next week. Now I'd like to turn it over to David and Matt. Uh, hello, everyone. Hope you're having a uh, wonderful day. Uh, as Atusa mentioned, this is our uh, sort of new idea called couch coding, which I guess involves David and I talking about coding uh, on a couch. Uh, a lot of this is, as mentioned, question and answer driven. So uh, there's definitely ways with the GoToMeeting to, to add questions, and we'll sort of pick them out and group them and then try to talk about your topics. We'll also just generally opine and joke and you know, sort of discuss you know, what it might be somewhat of a sort of boring topic around migrating sites, but honestly can be pretty fun, especially if you can try out new tools or you know get projects off legacy hosts that maybe were you know sort of causing you trouble and this kind of thing. But we're going to cover anything from you know hey like what are the issues with you know why I might even want to move if I have an old site you know how do I package my site to move what are benefits that I might get here's some gotchas that you might have we'll talk a little bit about Pantheon's interfaces to do this. And then I can show a lot of some stuff depending on the questions um, on this little demo site that I set up. Mostly everything that we're showing you today, you can totally you do along with yourself uh, on the Pantheon site right now. So you don't have an account, you can go to Pantheon.io and get one, and you can uh, follow along, migrate your site along with us, and send us any jokes or other things uh, that we have. Okay, so um, we have collected some questions from. Uh, Twitter and other um, sources we've kind of solicited for ideas prior to the webinar. So we do have a little bit of a backlog to start with uh, in addition to the questions introduced during the webinar. Um, should we take it from the top? Sure. Yeah. Let's launch in with the first question. This question is, is it possible to migrate a Pantheon dev site to another Pantheon dev site? Uh, I think I could run with that. So. One of the things that you'll notice on Pantheon is that you, um, you know, will sort of build out your site, and sometimes you want to like take that site and move it to another, you know, sort of instance on Pantheon. This may mean that you've built a template site and you want to now create, you know, different versions of it. It might be that like you're, um, you know, needing just to like, you know, reset your your environment and sort of start from scratch. It could be that you, um, you know, want to move it over something else for experimentation or whatever. Um, so one of the things that we make really easy with inside of Pantheon is the ability to actually export out the different aspects of your site. Um, and that one of the things that you'll sort of see, you know, from the different kind of operations is that we can, you can actually run, you know, straight up, straight up backups of the site. And that the backups are actually going to give you three different parts of your site. And this is really important to like the kind of strategies for migration that we're really going to be proposing. Because for every Drupal and WordPress site, what really we're talking about is actually some aspect of code, the PHP, JavaScript, CSS that actually runs the site, some database that has all the content or has the like database content records and sort of configuration in many cases for the sites, and the actual uploaded files. And those, all three of those are actually separate discrete parts that you'll need to do a successful migration. And so when we're migrating from one Pantheon dev site to another Pantheon dev site, our first step is that we have to, like any migration, we have to actually get a code base, a database, and some files. And in the case of Pantheon, we make that really easy. Uh, the backup technology that we have will export out the database, the files, and the code base. It'll give us nice links to download them, and we can actually pull them down. And then what happens is that sort of then to move it to another dev site, and this is sort of our primary recommendation if you are moving any site to Pantheon, that there are, when you start off a site, instead of running through sort of a, maybe a normal import workflow, you just create a new blank site for the different you know, Drupal or WordPress version that you're running. And then what you can do is you can take that code base that you download, and you can do a git checkout of the new, of the new site's code base, you can push up that code to your site. That's step one. Step two 
is you can use our, uh, under uh, our workflow tools, there's an import option, and you can actually import your MySQL database, either by you know, using browse or having an actual web accessible URL. You can directly paste in the URL that you get from the backup link. Yeah, right into, right into that field, and that'll actually do an import. And you can do the same thing for the site files. Although there's a few gotchas with files that I'm sure we'll talk about later, because many times site files are, are quite large, and so dealing with large file directories can be a, a problem for people. But in general, if you want to move from one Pantheon dev instance to another, do a backup on one, get that stuff on your computer, or just get the URLs, start up a new site with the particular Drupal or WordPress version that you have, and then you can use this workflow import tab to bring the database and the files in, and you can use Git to bring the code in. However, if you're just doing this to get an additional development sandbox for an existing site, it's much easier to use uh, the tools we call multi-dev, which are available for free to agencies and are also bundled with all business level uh, site plans. And what those do is we totally take care of the process of creating the Git branch, uh, pulling it onto a stack, um, cloning uh, the database and files from an existing environment for the site, and then allowing merging of code changes that occur after that point. Uh, and uh, in the other case that uh, Matt was talking about, where you might want to just spawn a whole bunch of dev sites that are kind of um, foundational to building new projects, uh, this, the best way to do that is through uh, what we call the kind of upstream project system, which is also available to agencies and, um, and enterprise accounts and uh, education accounts. And what that allows you to do is create a Git upstream uh, that new projects can be spawned from. And there are modules and tools for, uh, for Drupal to include uh, bundled content uh, in the form of files and uh, things like nodes so that you can pre-populate content on a site if that's what your goal is without necessarily pushing in a raw database snapshot or a file snapshot. Yeah, and we can talk about a bit more of some of that kind of stuff later. Upstreams are very important to Pantheon, and if you're migrating for multiple, a multi-site or something like that, this will be the technique you'll use, and I'm sure we'll talk about that later in the hour. So one person's looking for um, clarification on transferring the code over. Yes. So really, so one of the things that we've definitely seen that um, can be a little tricky when you're actually dealing with moving the code over is that in the case of Pantheon, when we spin up a new site, be it Drupal or WordPress, we're actually going to give you the latest and most up-to-date, secure, and bug-fixed version of the CMS, which seems like a reasonable approach, since we are very reasonable people. Um, but if you're moving a site from maybe a legacy host or you know, a dev environment somewhere else, it may not be running the most up-to-date version of Drupal or WordPress. In some cases, you may have not been able to upgrade Drupal or WordPress because of some issue. Uh, that will be something we'll need to resolve. Typically, what we recommend is that when you're migrating the code, if you're just migrating from Pantheon to Pantheon, the code base should be the same, assuming you've updated your Pantheon site. But if you're moving from someone else to Pantheon, a good best practice is when you do like a Git checkout of the code base, instead of just overwriting like all of your Drupal files or all of your WordPress files into that code base, you actually selectively pull out the, like, the actual custom stuff that you have. You, so you just grab the themes, the plugins, or modules, directories, Drupal install profile if you have it, and um, stick those things in the appropriate new code base. That way you sort of, you know, A, you're focusing on just the stuff that's different, now you're sort of using the most up-to-date version of Drupal or WordPress, but also you don't end up overwriting files. One problem that we do see is that in the version of, of Drupal, for example, that we spin up, we actually do make a number of modifications to Drupal's core code base, so only, that, only for seven and earlier. For seven and earlier, that's correct. Um, uh, and that those those are I mean those are relatively basic things like we automatically inject the database, we do some stuff for handling images, this kind of thing. Um, but if you overwrite, for example, Bootstrap.inc, a, a core file in Drupal seven, um, it, your new site won't work on Pantheon. So really great question. We are moving the code base move only the code, the sort of custom stuff or the contrib plugins or modules that you've actually done. Don't just wholesale copy it. One caveat too is that like occasionally you may have uh, some sort of patch or, 
or 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 thing, you know, bug fix to WordPress core or Drupal core that you're maybe working on trying to get committed to the actual project, but still lives as a patch uh, or bug fix file today. In those cases, what you want to do is sort of isolate those instances, and then you can apply that patch after you've actually moved in your custom code as well. Um, all this also with the caveat that you're going to need to actually update to the latest version of Drupal or WordPress, which is probably in your interest anyway, and that would definitely be a recommendation for best practice. Alrighty. Uh, our next question is more of a statement, but uh, I'd be really interested in a session on how to migrate from a Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 site on Pantheon using the Drupal 8 core experimental migrate modules and associate contributed modules and dress and Drush. Well, typically our first advice when doing a uh, site migration, if you're starting from WordPress Drupal, regardless of the direction you're going from there, as long as you're staying on WordPress or Drupal, is to migrate the existing project to Pantheon first. Uh, and the reason why is that it allows you to get um, good code snapshots in order. It allows uh, the ability to have the same team have joint access to both the old and the new project. Um, and it streamlines uh, any support issues that you might have in terms of uh, migrating content from one to the other uh, so that the support team here at Pantheon can view both projects uh, without having to say SSH into uh, an old server that an old site is on. Um, and so that, was, so that would be the start before performing any sort of Drupal 8 migration. Uh, that way you would have both projects on there. You could run the migration module, which involves connecting Drupal to uh, the new Drupal to the old Drupal site. Yeah, and I think one thing that's very important to talk about with respect to migration to Drupal 8 in specific, even if it's from Drupal 6 or Drupal 7, is that Drupal 8 requires a rebuild of your site. That any custom code you had written for Drupal 6 or 7 or a custom theme you had done for Drupal 6 or 7 will need to be rewritten for the, the, new, the new Drupal 8 way. Drupal 8 is a very different technology stack than Drupal 6 or 7. It uses a different template. Instead of PHP template for Drupal 6 and 7, it uses Twig for Drupal 8. And it has, uh, you know, instead of functional kind of you know, programming, it has object-oriented programming, and it has a number of other, you know, different different uh, uh, code patterns to sort of adopt sort of the Symfony uh, style style uh, work for Drupal 8. So you're not, not really going to be in a situation where you're going to look at code for Drupal and 6 and 7 sites and do some sort of update to that. You're, you're actually supporting the business logic, but not actually the code that does it. And by having both sites available that way to run the migration, you can also do as many dry runs as you want. And then when you're actually satisfied with the result of the dry run, uh, the, um, you'll be able to just do a very quick switch over in terms of removing the domain from the old site and switching the domain to the new site to basically do a kind of um, promotion of the new site to be the canonical site. Or if you need to roll back, it's really easy to roll back. Um, that said, there aren't a lot of unique issues or capabilities around using the actual migrate tool that is bundled with Drupal 8. Yeah, because what the sort of migration strategy for going from a Drupal 6 or 7 site, or any actually any other site to Drupal 8, is first you need to actually get, you know, move it to Pantheon's great, great advice from David, and then you're really focused on trying to ha get the data that you actually need out of your Drupal 6 or 7 site. Mm -hmm. And that may not be all the data. You may just be cool recreating the like half a dozen user profiles that you have. You might be able to move over some of the taxonomy terms, but maybe you have, uh, you know, 500 blog posts that need to be done. So you sort of focus your task on getting your Drupal 6 site to, you know, using Migrate to actually spit out those 500 blog posts, and then you can mm -hmm. import those on the other side. Yeah. It's a great practice to start with this early in the development process where you set up your Drupal 8 site and then do a dry run migration before you've even really scoped out the full project because you'll see how many things survive the transition. Because it won't, it won't take, say, views over from Drupal 6. It will take core and CCK and a handful of really popular uh, contrib modules, uh, excluding views, uh, and those will survive the transition, but that will be the content for the site. I'd also say those kind of migrations, when you do it that way, are actually a lot of fun because you end up actually doing development um, with the actual like real content on the site. 
So, you know, like, I mean, I took Latin in high school. It was sort of awesome, but also, like, totally a pain and very esoteric. <laughs> and so when I see a lot of lorem ipsum tasks that I might generate, I end up, like, getting getting sort of freaked out, like I'm back in, like, you know, my Latin 4 class where, like, I was the only one in class because everybody else dropped out by the fourth year. Um, uh, and I switched recently to uh, veggie ipsum, which is a little bit less of, like, a, a sort of Latin throwback from high school, but then the problem is I just get hungry <laughs> when I'm doing <laughs> development. So actually seeing real content on the site is a lot better. It also helps you to actually adjust for use cases that might come up. Like, you know, people do, as it turns out, relatively weird things sometimes. And, um, you know, being able to, like, develop and make sure that you're, you know, the styles that you have work for all of the content that you'll have is really nice. You don't have surprises at the end. One tool to look at on Pantheon on the dashboard, if you're doing this sort of migration, though, is under the workflow area, uh, we have the ability to wipe. Um, so basically, on your Drupal 8 site, what you're going to want to do is you're going to do this dry run migration many times. Like, you'll, you'll do an initial one. You'll see what survives the transition over. You might consider refactoring some things on the old site to make them more part of core. Uh, and then you'll just want to keep doing this transition. Even if all the data makes it over perfectly, odds are you're going to be developing the Drupal 8 project long enough that you're going to have to repeatedly do content migrations from the old site. And by doing a wipe of the site and then doing a fresh installation and migration, you can migrate to a clean slate every single time uh, to see how well that migration works. Um, one other tip, too. Uh, which leverages this multi-dev stuff that we were talking about before, is if you have a team working on a, 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 a sort of migration, you can maybe ha you can create multiple multi-dev environments for the different kinds of imports that need to be done. So, like, if Dave and I are working on a project together, like, I could work on importing those blog posts, and David could, like, import the user profiles. And we could each write code in a separate multi-dev environment, test that, up, that migration in each of our environments, and then when we're comfortable with that, we can merge it into the dev environment. But it allows us to separate that kind of work and make sure we get the content. Uh, to, to be clear, like Drupal 8 doesn't support migration or upgrades at all the old way of have the old database in place and then run a bunch of kind of sketchy schema updates on top of it. So you will not be doing anything like pulling the full Drupal 6 or Drupal 7 database into the new site directly. That is just not necessary. It's not even supported anymore. And frankly, any large projects weren't doing that anyway because it would usually break if you had a substantially complex site. Uh, this is, of course, all different. A WordPress that cares a lot more about backwards compatibility for code, and so you, you typically won't have those kind of problems uh, there. Although sometimes you have really old versions of WordPress or it's sort of so off the rails that like so some of my projects that like you may just be better off starting over and then you could do an import of data. But that's not always necessary in the WordPress world. And just a couple of notes from our listeners. Um, some alternative warm Ipsum sites. Meettheipsums.com and hipsum.co. Check those out when you get a chance. Um, and now shifting gears from Drupal to WordPress, our next question is, can you speak to migrating multi-site installations of WordPress? Well, there are a couple of approaches you can take. Um, one of them, which is supported for all plans on Pantheon, is to break up the multi-site uh, for WordPress, which is where you take each of the major domains you were working with, you export the content for each of them, you import them to different WordPress installs. Uh, you could create an underlying product as an agency or enterprise account so that you can have a unified code base underlying each of those. And then if you want to keep some level of user or other integration, there are plugins you can use that allow you to have uh, some coordination of, uh, of that sort of data so that you don't have them all living on the same database. And that's really the best way to kind of scale them up because they're going to get partitioned resources. Uh, a really good day for one of the sites is not necessarily going to uh, gobble up resources that affect other ones. However, for um, elite level plans, which are only available through contracting on Pantheon, we do provide supported multi-site installations of WordPress, which includes the standard group, uh, not Drupal, the standard WordPress multi-site approach, where there is one database. Uh, I believe uh, additional tables get created for each installation of WordPress, 
but they still share some core cables. Uh, and for more Drupal familiar listeners, uh, I just want to explain that Drupal and WordPress multi-site are very different creatures uh, in the sense that WordPress multi-site genuinely makes use of the shared database in a supported way where you can coordinate on content and users and other assets uh, for all the sites in that multi-site, whereas Drupal uh, multi-site is really more about piling completely separate Drupal installations into the same uh, working uh, our web root and database. And in Drupal, you can sometimes trick it into sharing tables, but it's usually much more dangerous uh, and is definitely not a supported thing. So uh, on the Drupal side, we only support splitting up the site uh, so that they can independently be managed as code bases and databases. Uh, because we don't believe that there is as much of an upside on the Drupal side for doing multi-site. Yeah. To, um, so this is just the documentation page we have about WordPress site networks. If you are interested in that, we have a form where you can like, talk to us about that, and we can help you with that. I think, you know, in the case of what David's also talking about with the upstream technology, the... Uh, excuse me. The... Um, the, the real question, I think, if you're if you have a multi-site instance on your on an old host and you want to migrate it over, I think you sort of need to ask yourself some questions around like, why did I make this a multi-site in the first place? And that there are good reasons to like bundle sites together. Typically, there's there's cases of content sharing or user authentication sharing where you maybe you know had five blogs and you wanted to have them all use the same user table for that blogs. But you want to think about that. You're saying, okay, now it's 2016. Do I really want to have shared use, just a shared user table for these sites? Or maybe I could break up the sites into different sites and then use some single sign-on solution to handle authentication instead. Or maybe for content sharing, I don't necessarily need to like have each site read the database tables of the other sites. Maybe I could do some syndication um, you know, with, with JSON or RSS or something between the sites. And that, you know, there's definitely advantages and disadvantages to that, but I think that, you know, there definitely are, are, are worlds where you can say, instead of having, you know, 10 sites all on the same code base, you can set it up to have, you know, 10 different sites in Pantheon, and then I'll use a common upstream and do it that way. All right. One, uh, just one other quick shout out. Um, if you are interested more in, the, in, like, actually Drupal 8 migration, which is, like, totally... Uh, a valuable topic and probably something people who are working on, um, you know, migrating stuff now uh, are interested. I would definitely point you at Ryan Wheel's um, DrupalCon Latin America session. He did a, it's, it's online, you can just Google migrating into Drupal 8. And um, some, of, some of the stuff's been changed a little bit, but it's uh, generally pretty, pretty appropriate for people who are interested in migration. He walks you through the migrate module in Drupal 8, how you set up some use cases, and um, you know, talks very explicitly about some of the technical stuff you would do for a Drupal, a Drupal 8 migration. So that um, that's something to check out. So watch that to break out big. Yep. Um, and if you want the official community documentation on it, which lists all the related modules for doing migrations to Drupal 8, that's drupal.org slash upgrade slash migrate. So that's a... Uh... Okay. So this page, this is a bunch of... Um, uh, information that talks about similar kind of stuff, not as engaged as you would think of, you know, Ryan down in Columbia and Bogota night after going out and playing some Tejo game where you like throw like these like metal chunks. This is totally a game in Columbia. It's awesome. We did it for DrupalCon Latin America. It's like you have these big like thick, these big like metal like spheres and then you put a bunch of gunpowder in these like envelopes and put it on this like clay board. And then you throw the metal things across the room to like hit the gunpowder. And like you have, you know, whoever like blows up the most stuff wins. So you could read the like boring Drupal or documentation, or you could see somebody who was like blowing stuff up with gunpowder talking about it by video. It's a, it's a good thing we're skipping on migration questions to keep this webinar really on topic. <laughs> Uh, this couch coding is fine. <laughs> and I mean, on that note, our next question, <laughs> uh, back to migration, of course. I'm interested in the migration process from D7 to D8, and I'm curious about issues specific to Pantheon hosting, like the lack of settings.php and no htaccess file. Um, let's, yeah, let's talk, so let's, let's talk about htaccess first, because I know um, that's going to be something people will definitely deal with. 
Um, and I'll like defer to David in a sec for more of a technical sort of view here, but like in general, like a lot of people who have a Drupal or WordPress site have done some things in HT Access to make that site work. And one of the things that you'll notice when you move to Pantheon is that we don't use Apache, we use Nginx as a web server, which means we don't actually have HD Access do anything on the platform. And so if you have stuff in HD Access, you actually need to find other ways to do that kind of logic on your site. And really, um, for us to answer these sorts of questions, um, we need questions that are a little more oriented to the use case. So uh, I can go into a couple common ones for HD Access. Uh, like for one, um, uh, and uh, Matt just pulled up a documentation page on it, which is redirecting incoming requests, uh, which through a combination of PHP and the edge caching that we do on Pantheon, it's possible to get really good sets of redirects going on and kind of rewriting uh, happening in terms of uh, what requests Drupal's responding to or WordPress is responding to in a way that scales really, really well uh, because uh, these redirects can get cached in Varnish, uh, and you can set the criteria for when the redirect occurs. Like, uh, for example, if the redirect is for non-HTTP to HTTPS or vice versa, uh, then uh, what you can do is you can set, say, a very header on um, the protocol, uh, which is basically saying, uh, depending on the protocol that someone's accessing the page, uh, I need this to be keyed in the edge cache. And that allows Varnish to do something like know that when it comes in with HTTP that it should redirect to HTTPS. But if someone comes in on the same URL uh, but with HTTPS that they get to go right to the content. Um, so there are good strategies for doing this on Pantheon. Um, some of the other cases for HT access are more non-standard um, uh, patterns of directory layouts or other things with the project. And for those sorts of projects, we typically encourage more standardization, where uh, if the directories can be set up in a way and the files can be named in a way that is much more uh, rigidly compliant with the, uh, the standard Drupal project layout, uh, then that will uh, not only benefit you in terms of having less configuration, but when you revisit old projects and maintain existing projects, you're just going to have more consistency because one of the worst cases in terms of maintaining projects is that you make assumptions about the layout of the project, and then you find out that some things have been overridden in Apache, and it's actually making the behavior different on a project-by-project -project basis. Yeah. Uh, as for settings.php, we actually... We with the sole exceptions in Drupal 6 and 7 of trying to configure the database or Redis connection or things like that because we load in the Pantheon configuration after parsing settings.php. Uh, but changing any other settings in there, handling redirects, uh, any other logic that you want to put in that isn't germane to the actual platform configuration uh, will work fine. Yeah. And the reason we do it that way with database configuration is you can, say, have local database connection information in a project that you use on your laptop, and if you push that up to Pantheon, it will still properly connect to the database on Pantheon. Here's just a quick uh, Drupal. This is our Drupal 8 settings.php file that we give you. It's pretty light because we're including all of our special stuff in a settings. Uh, or no, in a Pantheon, settings.pantheon.php, and our... Um, Best practice is you can sort of add some add some stuff to settings.php here if you have it for all your sites, and if you need just something for like a local development environment, we uh, will look for a settings.local.php file as well, and you can use that to do settings.php magic. All right. Next question is: Do I have a WordPress multi-site installation that I'm running? I think you're skipping one. Uh, yeah, natural. Okay. Uh, how would I migrate that to Pantheon? Uh, well, we. We mostly covered that in the sense of uh, if you want to migrate it directly, then it needs to be to an elite level plan uh, to get the support for the complexities of Drupal multi or not Drupal WordPress multi-site. 
And the reasons why we restrict that support to uh, elite plans is because as the number of installations multiplies on a WordPress multi-site, it multiplies the number of tables, it multiplies the traffic to the installation, you really need the scalability that's offered at the elite plan levels where we can just keep adding containers to scale up the site or add database replicas or, or set the database size to be bigger because many, many sites are potentially being piled into one stack. Uh, whereas uh, for standard kind of self-service plan levels, we encourage splitting up the project in things like single sign-on tools, uh, content federation options so that it's split up project by project. Each project gets its own isolated resources and you don't have the problem of uh, one monolithic installation getting uh, uh, continuously larger. Right. Our next question is a little more of a statement, um, but John would like us to cover some large site migrations. Um, I, can, I can start with that. So um, a lot of the stuff, and this is something we definitely see people run into problems with, is that the sort of defaults that we set up for importing sites, they work pretty well for small sites um, that are standardly configured. But when you have sites that are larger, bigger projects, you actually end up needing to do a little massaging and a little bit of extra stuff than just sort of the normal use case. So for example, um, when I'm actually in archive and I'm importing the files for the site, I mean, I can upload a, a tarball of my files, but, if I, but there's a limit to how big that can be of 100 megabytes. Um, I can also provide a URL to like a Dropbox links or some other publicly accessible link for files, but there's a limit there of 500 megabytes. And in a large site, you're probably going to actually have a lot, a lot more files than that. Um, and that can be something that can be sort of frustrating because you'll like wait to uh, like, you know, upload 100 megabytes or 500 megabytes and it won't work as well. Um, and the, the sort of way to handle the files for uploading large sites uh, or just sites that have more than 100 or 500 megabytes of files is that we actually offer an ability to, uh, instead of just using our tools for the upload, we can actually do, uh, you can use like an rsync tool to, um, to actually go ahead and, and upload uh, those files. It's really important to use our rsync directions because uh, when you're syncing things to the files directory, that's a network file system. And the network file system on Pantheon is optimized around working with full files so that when a file gets changed, it's considered to basically be replaced. But when you're uploading content uh, over rsync, it's doing a bunch of small writes to the same file. So the instructions we have for rsync in our documentation uh, configure rsync so that it is putting temp uh, temporary and partial files into a temp directory that is local to the server. And then once a file upload is complete, then it moves it to the network file system. And then that spares it from doing a hundred times the writes to the network file system that, that it needs to. So that'll optimize the upload. Uh, it allows it to resume things more effectively because uh, only full files get copied into the network file system. So it pre preserves the integrity better. Uh, and um, we have a couple other options on the rsync instructions around compression and com how it does comparisons so that it optimizes around how we manage files on the platform. And of course, we provide some code here in our documentation you can just copy. And for folks that aren't familiar with rsync, rsync is a tool that basically will say, take a, like a, local, take a version of files that are sitting in one directory and move them to a remote server or, or no, another folder and make sure that they're synced so they're exactly the same. And that means that like you can go in your existing files directory on your site you want to migrate and you can move over all the files in that directory. It also has this really great property because it's trying to actually sync them that if you like only get 70% of the way there or something um, and then you want to start, you know, you come back to it later, you could run that rsync again. It'll scan through the files that are already copied, but it knows that they're already the same, so it need to do double work. So you can sort of keep running that even if you get like a you know, small update or something to your existing site, run the rsync again, it'll move over any new files and make sure those are up to date. It also has a couple other optimizations in here, like using only the size of the files rather than uh, trying to uh, pull down the full file, hash it, and then compare the hashes. Uh, so it's a little less rigorous in terms of, uh, I, we wouldn't recommend using this uh, continuously for pushing 
uh, changed files to a site, but in terms of importing a site where mostly you are just adding in existing files and then if it doesn't exist it needs to get uploaded, this works great. And by using size only, it doesn't pull down the content of every file from the network file system just to determine whether you need to push the file in. Right, which is quite smart. Um, the other thing for a sort of large, uh, large import is the same kind of limitations, 100 megabytes for an uploaded file, 500 for a URL, also, also applies to the database itself. Um, one way to sort of help to you know, gin it up a bit more is that you can, of course, give us a, a gzip compressed database instead of just the raw.sql file. The gzip is typically going to compress the SQL file relatively well, so you can get a little more bang for your buck out of this. But you still will have cases, even in a gzip scenario, where your database file is in excess of 100 or 500 megabytes. One sort of tip we have for dealing with that is that it often is the case that in databases, there's a lot of information that's there that it takes the form of cache tables or like a search index or something that isn't actually data you necessarily need to move. That the cache tables are completely, it's completely fine to truncate those before you migrate over Pantheon because they will be rebuilt on the other end. So if you have a site that's, you know, generally um, in the margin uh, of this, but maybe a little more, more size than you want, you could just go in and truncate everything in cache dash, for example, in a Drupal site or, or pull that, kill the MySQL search index and then move that over. That stuff will be rebuilt on the back end, but it won't have to be imported in, which can allow you to, to make the import work faster and, and more efficiently. Mm -hmm. All right, um, our next question has a prereq, which is, um, this question is related to migrations from other hosting uh, platforms to Pantheon, and this is mostly related to Drupal sites. So the question is, what's the best practice to handle hard-coded paths in content and various objects that are stored as serialized data? So the best practice is to not use them uh, and to configure things so that objects and serialized data don't use them. And in my experience working with projects that were encountering these sorts of things, uh, specifically with uh, mentioned here, C tools, image styles, variables, and I've also seen cases of SIP CRM having this kind of issue. Uh, it's important to configure base paths on the site in a relative way uh, so that as the underlying directories, the kind of predecessor or closer to the root directories change, uh, that the site doesn't break. Um, and even if you weren't on Pantheon, if you just had a multi-environment setup where you have, say, development, testing, and live, typically the directories are going to change between those. And you're going to want to be able to copy the database between those different workflow environments. So the limitation that Pantheon has in terms of the, uh, the lower level directories changing between containers are also a workflow issue. Uh, so even if we had consistency there, you would still encounter issues as you move, say, the production database the test or development environment or a multi-dev environment. Uh, and so it's just best to avoid it entirely. Uh, you can generally configure those root directories so that as things serialize paths uh, or construct paths, they do it on a relative foundation. Like, for example, in Civic CRM, you can configure the base path to not be an absolute path. Um, and then it will just use that as the prefix for all the data it stores in the database. All right, next question is, uh, I have two similar sites, one on Pantheon that has more installed modules and the other on another host that has more content and files. How do I merge the two into a single site on Pantheon? Um, okay, so, so the question here, we have two different sites. Um, one has maybe some more modules, more logic, the other has has more content, you want to merge them together. Um, so a little bit of this is going to depend on your use case, of course. I think one of the things that I would definitely point people to is using the migrate module um, in, in the Drupal context, since you're talking about modules, we're assuming that's Drupal. And what the migrate module can do is it can, you know, accept a variety of different data inputs. And so I would start with the site that has more of the modules and has more of the, the configuration and code you want, mm -hmm. and then use that to actually import the content from the other site. And that's the great thing about the migrate module, that you're not having to start from one monolithic database and update it. You can literally pull in different sources and do several stages of migration to get the final product. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, that's, that, would, that would be our recommendation. And then, you know, it, and the MyGuard module is really nice. Like, I have good times working with it, you know. it's I've used previous solutions, like uh, the Feeds module in Drupal 7 did similar kind of stuff, but it wasn't as elegant. Like, using the Feeds module was sort of, it was like eating like a sort of like a sort of crusty donut or something. But the migrate module is, it's like having a really nice French pastry that you're eating. <laughs> and um, not that I like the feeds module, I don't want to dig it, but I think, you know, the migrate module is definitely the creme de la creme of it. So um, it's, uh, it's also really cool. It'll do like dry runs and tests and stuff. So you don't have like a bunch of, it'll like remove and do garbage cleanup when you're doing test imports and is very, very powerful. Yeah, and, and it's, you can definitely do that even just using Pantheon's native workflow tools where you can create a multi dev environment of the complex site that has all the, code and um, kind of uh, configuration complexity and then test migrate into that. And then as those test migrations work, then you can choose to do a test migration, or not test migration, a production migration uh, once everything looks great. Ready. Our next question is, I've got a site using some CRM. Any issues migrating sites with two databases? Um, you, you'll have no issues doing anything with C Civic CRM in any kind of development or migration capacity. It's, uh, um, no, sorry, Civic CRM is actually something that gets really tricky to use, especially um, in the context of, of something like Pantheon that has a slightly different architecture than Civic CRM's code base was designed for. Um, it is possible to do it on Pantheon, I think. I like Civic CRM. I think it, the sort of philosophy of the project and a lot of the code base is used by a lot of people, but it definitely is something that can be a little bit tricky to work with. But there is, the good news is that it's possible Civic CRM names its tables in a way that doesn't conflict with Drupal. Yep. So you can pile it into the same database that Drupal's using. And uh, actually, there's good news about doing that, too, which is that uh, on Pantheon, just like any kind of really uh, responsibly designed uh, database setup, uh, database backups and workflow happen with transactional snapshots, where it does a completely consistent uh, snapshot of all the data. So that means that as say a donation gets created on Civic CRM that ties into a user record on Drupal, uh, there is a consistency to the, working with that data, if they, uh, but they have to be snapshotted in the same database. You can't do a cross-database uh, transactional snapshot uh, across different MySQL or MariaDB instances. So combining this into one thing actually provides more consistency around the data, more reliable backups, more reliable workflows, and it actually should work fine for Civic CRM. Next question is, I'm importing a Drupal 6 website with lots of content types, but want to know if there's a way to create content types and fields in my Drupal 7 on Pantheon systematically slash automatically instead of manually. Well, um, what you want to do is use the migrate module in Drupal 8 because it will actually take care of those for you. Um, in Dr the Drupal... Um, well, but if he's... But if, if oh, he sorry, this is Drupal 7. Drupal 7. Oh, um, well, that's a little tougher. Um, it is the, yeah, we'll do well, the, the Drupal Drupal 7 fields and core does support upgrading from CCK. Yeah. Uh, so it's technically supported, but it's in the old fashion of kind of schema in place migrations rather than migrate pulling the data abstractly. Yeah. Um, I would also say like um, moving to Drupal, if you're on Drupal 6 right now, uh, as you probably heard, Drupal 6 has been end of life from the community support as of February. So migrating it and upgrading it, it sounds like a good plan. Um, I would say that like Drupal 8 definitely supports importing from Drupal 6 as well, so. But if you still wanna go Drupal 7, no problem. You just need to like use the sort of normal Drupal 6 to 7 upgrade process and it will support CCK and a number of the modules that integrate with that well, and, to move fields. And migrate module and related support does exist for Drupal 7, it's just not in core. Yeah. Um, however, I would say that the upgrade path from Drupal 6 to Drupal 8, beta as it may be, or experimental as it may be, uh, is probably more reliable than the in-place schema update that Drupal 7 offers. Yeah. And it's something you can test and try and, and this kind of thing. I mean, so. the, without having to wipe the database, reload in the old database, and go through the schema update. Like, I have never upgraded a major site with the in-place schema update. The, and the, actually, the closest I've done is taking Drupal.org to Drupal 6, and we basically had to shut down the site for uh, the better part of a day to run all of it and constantly do dry runs of it. 
and after tons of tweaking by tons of core maintainers, we were ultimately able to get it to work. Uh, but it is a very finicky process, and I would seriously consider going right to Drupal 8 if possible for that project right from Drupal 6. Um, also, I mean, if you want to go old school, um, one of the things we've noticed here at the office is Drupal 5 is currently making a resurgence. We've, you know, you can see in the last month there have been 25,000 or 23,000 or so new Drupal 5 sites created. Drupal site is very simple to use. It's uh, 35,000 lines of, of, of honest to God poetry, um, and it's uh, you know something that also might you know depending on if this trend line continues, you know, in five months or six months, we're gonna have a ton of sites. And, and we're announcing it here uh, to the world that Neil Drum is, has decided to recommit to reviving Drupal 5. You may have to bother him. He, he is entirely sold, but we believe that it's possible in the future. So uh, Drupal 5 is, is my belief is the best version of Drupal. You can, um, uh, and something's happening with the usage stats. We actually don't, I talked to Neil about it. Neil's the Drupal 5 maintainer, and it's sort of unclear what's actually happening, but. Um, something big might be there, so you heard it here first. Uh, if you're not following my account on Twitter, well, I tried to <laughs> I tried to announce it, but didn't get a lot of love. I think everyone's focused on Drupal 8. Drupal 5 is too old school. Ready. Our next question is: um, It was probably already covered, but just for review, I'm moving features from site to site, not an entire migration or content migration, but code. Um, but I'm exporting and importing features, principally using D8. Uh, that's probably best done within Drupal 8 itself, but wondering if Pantheon has any functionality to help with that. Okay, so um, to just bring everyone up to date on kind of what features is in Drupal 8, uh, I talked a little bit about this in uh, the blog post I published a couple days ago, uh, but features in Drupal 8 is just a bundling of functionality. It is features in the truest sense of it is trying to group a set of configuration uh, so that you can ship it as a feature. Uh, it is not doing uh, what has moved into core for Drupal 8, which is trying to extract configuration, force configuration, application, or the other things that we've really harmonized with core and APIs in the Drupal, through the Drupal 8 configuration management initiative. Uh, so that said, it's actually a perfect tool for doing what uh, is suggested here, which is genuinely moving a bundle of con configuration from one site to another or publishing it in a way where you can uh, pull it in. Um, and um, the ways that Pantheon can help with this uh, are that we have, um, we have good support um, through um, the SFDP development mode for kind of pulling configuration into place and then applying it. Um, so SFDP development mode makes the Drupal code, like the whole working area, a writable thing on the server so that you can do things like exporting a feature directly on the server using a tool like Drush, and then you can actually commit that to the code base if you want. And then that is usually something that you can actually kind of pull out. Uh, there are um, increasingly uh, tools for things like features in core to just directly download uh, the configuration or pull it right from the active configuration on a site to the client using something like Drush, uh, so it may not be uh, necessary if you're intending on actually shipping around features to export it to the code and then commit it. Um, the other thing that um, might help with use of this is that if you're applying features or exporting things, you might be able to use uh, the cloud integration tools that we have with Quicksilver, as we call it, where you can uh, put triggers um, into the platform for common events that cause code to get executed in your PHP for the site. So if you wanted to do something where, let's say you have a features development site, and as you develop the features, what you want to do is you want to, say, deploy to production once you've tested out the feature, and then when you deploy to production on, on like the live environment on that site, you want it to publish the features or export them or import them to other sites. You can put triggers into the platform where you can, uh, say, export and publish or deploy those features to other sites as an event triggered by deploying to live on your features development site. Uh, so that can kind of provide integration between the workflow tools as well as developing these reusable pieces of configuration or, or packages of configuration. All right, we have time for just a couple more questions. Um, the next one is uh, kind of, uh, this one is a follow-up to a question the speaker had, or, um, excuse me, this listener had asked. 
It's a little wordy, so follow along. <laughs> Can I extend my question and rephrase it? I need to migrate 100 plus sites on Pantheon, both Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, that already have hard co hard coded paths and all sorts of serialized data stored in uh, the database. Are there any tools recommended to clean this up, or is manual hunting and fixing this case my only solution? Cheap trick is to just add sim links to sites slash folder if that points to default site directory, and just keep all those hard coded paths in database. But after I add a second sim link, I'm getting a warning about multi site detected. Site still works, but it's annoying. Oh, okay. So when you okay, cheap, so and cheap trick isn't actually adding sim links. Cheap, cheap trick is a ban from Rockford, Illinois, just to qualify, clarify that. <laughs> but the uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, so I had misinterpreted what it meant by hard coded paths. Um, I think the case here is that uh, it's not. Just get it working with the symlink. Um, even though you might get the multi-site warning, it's not actually going to break any things on Pantheon. It's not like you're going to get an angry phone call or something from someone here saying that we're not going to run the site anymore. It's just a, an informative warning, just in case you're trying to wedge multi-site into the platform. Uh, but it will work. It'll work fine. And uh, I would just make sure that uh, serialized paths that it does going forward don't require that. And then maybe you could have some sort of plan either to not do it that way when you rebuild the sites, or uh, especially for the Drupal 6 ones, or two, um, or two, uh, maybe uh, go through and basically hunt that stuff down with a script and then replace those in the serialized data uh, as possible uh, to, um, to remove those paths and target it at the standard sites directory, like sites default. Um, the um, I don't have a lot of other suggestions about that. I mean, any good any script that does that would need to be PHP because you would need to unserialize the PHP, change the value, and then reserialize it because things like serialized PHP have string lengths in them, and if you change the actual string, then you need to be wise to the hints that serialized PHP has in it. Yeah. The other thing, just sort of more to more more sort of generally for. Um, and that's a, that was a great question, I think, in terms of, of sort of the kind of use cases people will sort of run into some questions about. But um, we do have a support uh, tab that all sites on Pantheon can use, and that you can open up tickets to, you know, ask questions or report issues or things like this. We're not like super focused on like application support, but you know, if you have questions about, hey, how do I, how does Pantheon handle this, or you know, how does can I get I can't get rsync to work or something like like that. Support's a good place to ask that question, you know, and uh, we can get back to you with some information and some documentation on that can hopefully help solve your problem. All right, we're going to take one last question, uh, and that is, what is the difference between code base and files? Isn't the code base a set of files? Okay, uh, the code base definitely is a set of files. Uh, the naming of files on Pantheon is based on the Drupal convention of calling something the files directory. Uh, which is uploaded files that are tied to uh, uh, files we consider to be kind of two things on Pantheon. It's things that are referenced from the database where let's say someone uploaded images or uploaded maybe an mp3 file for a podcast or even some smaller video files and then that gets referenced in the database. And for all workflow purposes on Pantheon, the files content flows alongside the database. So if you freshen the test environment to do a dry run deployment, we pull the files directory content as well as the database back from the live environment. Whereas code is the stuff that actually moves the opposite direction, which is your code base, your configuration, um, the things that you've committed to Git. Um, and so it ultimately is the distinction of what direction things are flowing, whether it's associated more with content or associated more with code. Uh, another thing that we consider to be files on Pantheon but don't necessarily carry forward with workflow uh, and you don't necessarily want to upload are generated files like aggregated CSS, aggregated JavaScript, 
um, image derivatives for styles. Um, stuff that needs to get written on one server and then needs to be available uh, for reading regardless of the container that a further request gets routed to. Um, the, um, so uh, that should, um, that's what we mean by that. It's files, when we say files, we mean the content files. Alrighty, unfortunately that is all we have time for today. Thank you all for joining us for our first edition of Couch Coding. Um, if you have any questions or feedback, please visit our website where you'll find a contact us page and we'll put you in touch with the best member of our team and please be sure to join us for our next edition of Couch Coding. Have a great weekend, everyone.